Well, good morning, Journey family. Pastor Stephen here, and I'm so excited to be coming to you. Now, if you've been watching week after week, you know I'm always excited on Sunday. I love Sundays. They're my favorite day of the week. It's where I get to be with you digitally. I get to be with people in person at the Goodman Community Center. Uh, Sunday is an incredible day, not because it's it's better than being um, in smaller groups, but there's something about being in the large group. There's something about being together and even together digitally, and I'm so glad that you've joined us today. Again, my name is Stephen Mulkey. I'm the lead pastor here at The Journey. And if you're new, I encourage you to go to journeymadison.com to the Watch Live page to fill out the connect card so that we can get in contact with you, get you connected to community here at either at The Journey or in Madison in general. You can also go to, to journeymadison.com forward slash give to give a one-time gift or recurring gift. Again, we are so thankful for your generosity, which helps fund this ministry both online and in our city here in Madison, Wisconsin. A couple things to keep in mind as we start. Uh, first, have a Bible and a journal available to you so that you're ready to go. When, when, when God speaks to you, you can write it down. You can have the Word open. Find a safe place to watch the service from. And then make a comment. We'd love to know where you're watching from. We'd love to know how we can pray for you. We'd love to know uh, that you're participating in the service today. Uh, we have great worship today from InterVarsity. Again, I'm so grateful for all these amazing videos from InterVarsity that we can be led in worship by men and women from around the country. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for worship. Thank you for singing praises. Lord, we know that, that a part of our worship is doing warfare, spiritual warfare. And so, Lord, as we go into sing, uh, all of us have warfare that we need to do, warfare against sin, warfare against hopelessness, warfare against anxiety, against strongholds in our life. And so, Lord, we, we begin this time of singing with the confidence, God, that the victory has already been won, and now we are going to take possession of the victory we have already been given in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing together. Hey, InterVarsity, we're so excited to be with you as we lift up the praises of the Most High God together. Psalm 150, verse 6 declares, Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. So I want us to take a moment wherever we're at to breathe in the presence of God and breathe out our fears, our worries, and our concerns. Let's sing together unto the Lion and the Lamb. Amen. Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, Cadenas romperá y toda alma lavará, pues quien detiene al poderoso. Nuestro Dios es león, el león de Judá, quien rube y pelea en nuestras batallas, todos se postrarán ante nuestro Dios es cordero, que inmolado fue, el pecado quitó y nos dio libertad. Todos se postrarán ante el cordero y el león, se doblará toda rodilla. Oh, oh, oh. Make way before the King of Kings. The God, the God who comes to save, is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. For the sins of the world, His blood breaks the 
chains and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb oh every knee will bow before him quien detiene a poderoso ¿Quién detiene a poderoso? ¿Quién detiene a poderoso? ¿Quién detiene a poderoso? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Let's declare together our God. Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow. of the world His blood breaks the chains and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb Oh, every knee will bow before Him Oh, oh, oh Oh, oh, every knee will bow Oh, Who shall I fear? 
whom shall I be afraid? Yes, the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? Yeah, the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will trust in you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Oh, I will trust in you. And I will, I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain, I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Oh. We set our hope on you. Confiamos en ti, Señor. Confiamos en tu amor. Confiamos en aquel quien es eterno. Dios, eres eterno. Dios, eres eterno. Confiamos en ti, Señor. Confiamos en tu amor. Confiamos en aquel quien es eterno. Dios, eres eterno. Dios, eres eterno. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. You are the everlasting. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. Oh. Yes, you are God. You're the everlasting God. We put Yes, we put our hope in you. Oh, we trust in God. Oh. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. Eres eterno, Dios, eres eterno, Dios, you are the everlasting
be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, he is my song. For you are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, you are good, you're good. Oh, you are good, you're good. Oh, let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days. Oh, he is my song. Let the king. Inside my sails, the anchor in the waves. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the anchor of my days. Oh, he is my song. You are good. You're good. Oh. You're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let. You're never gonna let me down. No, no, never, never. Oh, you're never gonna let. You're, you're never, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let. You're never gonna let me down. Cause you are good. You're good. Oh. You are good, you're good. Oh, you are good, you're good. Oh, right here, right you are you're good, still good, you're good. Oh, you're so good, yes, you you're good. Well, that was incredible worship from University. I'm so grateful uh, for University. Stephen and Ashley uh, Vanderwerp uh, work for University and, and give us those videos. It's just so good to be led by them. and so glad that Stephen and Ashley are part of the journey, leading and participating as, uh, as they do here. 
Uh, church, uh, your generosity has just been incredible this past year. Thank you for giving. Thank you for participating. Thank you for being a part of what we're doing. As we have gone back to the community center, we've got rent to pay at the community center. We've got ministries that we're now seeing and we want to fund. We've got staff that we need to begin to look to hire new staff and begin to retool the journey moving forward now that we're back in person. So I just encourage you, if you've been giving faithfully, continue to give faithfully. If you haven't given yet, I encourage you to give towards this ministry. It helps fund this ministry, and you will be blessed as you give. Uh, if you've been giving, but you haven't tithed yet, or you haven't done um, consistent recurring giving, I encourage you, uh, take the step of faith and begin to tithe. Begin to uh, give uh, consistently and watch as the Lord blesses your faithfulness in, in your life. So, Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for giving. Uh, God is at work in so many ways in our city through the Journey Church and through so many churches in our city. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for uh, your generosity towards us. Thank you for caring for us. Thank you for loving us. And Lord, we pray right now. Lord, I pray specifically uh, for healing. Lord, I know there's many who are sick. There's people still sick with COVID. There's people sick with other diseases and cancers and things. Lord, I know even within our church, people who are struggling and hurting, and I pray emotional healing over those struggling with anxiety, fear, and, and, and emotional pain. Lord, bring healing and comfort. I pray those who need miraculous physical healing, God, you would bring right now miraculous physical healing, alleviate the migraine, um, alleviate the pain in, in the shoulder, in the arm. Uh, God, I pray in your name, Jesus, that you would bring healing right now. Amen. Well, church, God bless you as you give. Everybody. I'm Jill Bailey. Welcome to The Journey, and thanks so much for being here today. We are going to get started with our sermon here in just a few minutes, so get your Bible and journal ready. If you're new here with us at The Journey this morning, we want you to feel at home. So no matter what your background or current situation, just know that this is a safe and welcoming place, and we're glad to have you with us. We also want you to know that there's a place at The Journey that's just perfect for you, because church is so much more than a Sunday service. It would be so helpful to us if you would be sure to make your way over to our website at journeymadison.com on our Watch Life page and fill out our visitor form today. When you hit submit, it goes out to one of our pastors and you'll get a nice welcome email from Pastor Stephen and a gift in the mail from us. We're so thankful to have you with us today. Oh, church, we are so over the moon happy to say that we have now finally returned to the Goodman Center for in real life Sunday services at 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. It has been a very emotional and blessed time since we returned to the Goodman Brassworks on Easter morning, and we look forward to seeing you all return to our church home as soon as you are able and comfortable. We are here for you. We will still continue to roll out awesome virtual church and daily content and keep you connected until we can all safely worship together again. We are also continuing our online midweek service, the entire book of James, on Wednesday evenings. So look out for those and send any questions to info at journeymadison.com. Ooh, important in announcements, church. As our word of the year forward unfolds, we are stepping out in faith on the third Sunday of every month. And we're calling it 
move forward into Madison. Use the third Sunday of every month to get out into the community, to serve, and to love on your neighbors. We will not have in-person services on the third Sunday at the Goodman Center, so mark it down until it becomes muscle memory to move forward into Madison. However, services will stream on demand all weekend long, so you can stay up to date with the Israelites as they cross the desert. And another important announcement, we want to hang out with you as you're able and comfortable. So starting on Sunday, May 16th, Pastor Mulkey and his family are welcoming each and every one of you to their home just to hang out from 6 to 8, p- p- blah, 6 to 8 p.m. at their home for Barbecue Sunday at the Mulkey's. Just please bring your own meat or veggies to, to grill and a side to share. Drinks, plates, music, fellowship, and fun will be provided. If you are new to the journey or a regular attender who wants to be in the know of what is happening, we have our handy dandy app. Just search for Journey Church Madison in your app store, download the app, and turn on the notifications. It's easy peasy. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel and like our page on Facebook to stay up to date with everything happening at the journey. Thanks so much for being here with us today. We believe you're here for a reason. God has something he wants to say specifically to you, wherever you are. And it's our hope that today you're encouraged and feel closer to him than ever before. Please let us know if there's anything we can do to help you. And connect with us at journeymadison.com and on social media to stay up to date with everything happening here at The Journey. We also hope to see each of you in our lobby time after the services on Zoom. So watch for the link in the chat on your streaming platform and we'll see you there. We hope you have a great weekend. Well, church, we have the opportunity to hear from Pastor Corey Manglos. Pastor Corey has become a dear friend of mine. Uh, she's on staff here at The Journey, helping with children's ministry and finances. Uh, really, with, with you know, Pastor Corey and I are the two staff here at The Journey right now. We're looking to uh, hire more as we begin to grow and get back together at Goodman Center. And I'm just so grateful for Corey. Uh, Corey, it, we could not have done this past year of ministry during the pandemic without you, without your faithfulness, without your husband Brendan's faithfulness. And I'm just so grateful for you and your family, Landon and Elena and Sakani. And I thank you. Thank you for uh, your passion for Jesus and for truth. And uh, you're just an incredible teacher. So church, you are in for a treat today as Pastor Corey teaches out of Exodus 15. This is going to be just a great message. As we just got saved, uh, you know, the, the, the Israelites went through the Red Sea. All the Egyptians got killed when the waves crushed them. And so uh, now you're going to experience this great song of praise and this huge moment of celebration is where Pastor Corey is going to be in the book of Exodus. And I'm so excited for the word that she has for all of us today. So Pastor Corey, uh, let me pray for you and then we'll dive right in. Jesus Bless Pastor Corey. Bless her as she preaches. Bless her family, Brendan and Landon and Elena and Sakani. God, bless them financially. Bless them spiritually. Bless them physically. Lord, we are so grateful for them. Models of your goodness, your faithfulness, your grace. Thank you, God. Speak through Pastor Corey as she preaches now. In your name, amen. Let's dive into the word. Hey, Journey family, I'm so excited to be with you today and to share this word from Exodus 15. Last last week, Pastor Nicole spoke to us about the parting of the Red Sea, and we're going to see that kind of just in the beginning of the text today. But I'm really excited to share with you the points that God has laid on my heart from this passage. So let's pray, and then let's dive into the word. Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for the worship that we've just enjoyed and that we've been able to spend time in your presence and that you've prepared our hearts to hear the words of the message. I thank you for the Holy Spirit who illuminates the scripture and makes it very real and very personal to us. 
And I just pray, God, that as we look through this text, that you will bring conviction where it is needed, that you will bring encouragement where it's needed, and that you will teach us to fall deeper in love with you. Help us to be people on a mission, your mission, together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today we've arrived at an amazing place in the story of Exodus. It is true freedom for the Israelites. We have an exciting journey ahead of us as we continue to delve into this amazing redemption story. After 400 years of slavery, the Israelites have been delivered by an absolutely miraculous work of God. Last week, as I said, Nicole shared with us about how God miraculously delivered the Israelites at the Red Sea from the soldiers of Pharaoh's army. And today we're going to look at their reflection and their celebration of that event. So if you would turn with me to Exodus chapter 15, we're going to be reading the whole chapter and then we'll break that down for you. Then Moses and the sons of Israel sang the song to the Lord and said, I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will extol him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has cast into the sea, and the choicest of his officers are drowned in the Red Sea. The deep covers them. They went down into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is majestic in power. Your right hand, O Lord, is majestic in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. And in the greatness of your excellence, you overthrow those who rise up against you. You send forth your burning anger, and it consumes them as chaff. At the blast of your nostrils, the waters were piled up. The flowing water stood up like a heap. The deeps were congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue them. I will overtake them. I will divide my spoil. My desire shall be gratified against them. I will draw out my sword. My hand will destroy them. You blew with your wind. The sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you among the gods, O Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in praises, working wonders? You stretched out your right hand, the earth swallowed them. In your loving kindness, you have led the people whom you have redeemed. In your strength, you have guided them to your holy habitation. The people have heard. They trembled. Anguish has gripped the inhabitants of Philistia. Then the chiefs of Edom were dismayed. The leaders of Moab, trembling, grips them. All the inhabitants of Canaan have melted away. Terror and dread fall upon them by the greatness of your arm. They are motionless as stone until your people pass over, O Lord, until the people pass over whom you have purchased. You will bring them and plant them in the mountains of your inheritance. The place, O Lord, which you have made for your dwelling. The sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. For the horses of Pharaoh with its chariots and its horsemen went into the sea. And the Lord brought back the waters of the sea on them. But the sons of Israel walked on dry land through the midst of the sea. Miriam, the prophetess Aaron's sister, took the tambourine in her hand, and all the women went after her with tambourines and with dancing. Miriam answered them, Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The horse and the rider he has hurled into the sea. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore it was named Marah. So the people grumbled at Moses, saying, What shall we drink? Then he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. 
And he threw it into the waters, and the waters became sweet. There he made for them a statute and a regulation, and there he tested them. And he said, if you will give earnest heed to the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight, and give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have put on the Egyptians, for I, the Lord, am your healer. Then they came to Elam, where there were 12 springs of water and 70 date palms, and they camped there beside the water. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this word that we're about to hear today. I thank you for the writer who wrote it down so that we could have it today. I thank you, Lord, that you teach us and you inspire us and you lead us. And I pray, God, that we will be responsive to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to see three things today. We're going to see that there's time to celebrate. We're going to see that we need to leave the past. And we're going to see that God gives rest. So time to celebrate. Let's take a moment. I want us to reflect upon what is happening here. The Israelites have just been freed, and they see God's miraculously providing for them safety and protection and freedom. Now, remember, they actually were released from Egypt just prior to this. And while they were going, Pharaoh changes his mind and sends his army after them. I want you to remember that they're being led by a cloud during the day, which gives them the much-needed shade and comfort. And they're being led by a fire at night, which gives them light and warmth and protection. So God is already doing these things for them. But we're going to see, as happens often, it's not always going to be enough. And then he's going to have to provide again and remind again. So as we look at rejoicing, in the 90s, some of these verses were used in a number of worship songs and churches, and specifically the words, the horse and the rider are thrown into the sea. And this was used as celebration, but if we're, if we're looking at it, it's the death of people. Like, that's what they're celebrating, and, and yes, they are, because these have been the people that have been oppressing them and holding them in bondage, and they're, they're not celebrating that death so much as they are celebrating God's deliverance for them and God's protection of them. Well, one day, my youth pastor's wife called to tell me a cute story about her then three-year-old. And he was getting dressed, and she could hear him singing. Some may dress in horses, and some may dress in chariots, but I will dress in the name of the Lord, as he was getting dressed. Now, his concept was wrong. It's not dress in horses. It's trust. But I thought, how cute that even in the simple, everyday things, this child understood that God is the one who protects us. Things like getting dressed. He's part of our daily life. And here Moses is so excited by this latest miracle, this deliverance and the passing of the Red Sea that he breaks out in song. I mean, can you identify with that pure joy? Can you identify that he is celebrating this deliverance? Now, don't get me wrong. In in Egypt, there is mourning and there is grieving still happening. But Israel is experiencing for the first time in their natural lives not only the miracles of God, but they're also beginning to understand what it means to be in covenant with God. Because remember, during their time of bondage, at some point in time during this 400 years, they no longer know what it means to serve the one true God of Israel. So they're learning. Moses' words to this song not only celebrate their victory over the enemy, but he's also celebrating the goodness of God. He says, The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. This is my God and I will praise him. This is my Father's God and I will extol him. When we walk before the Lord and our children see that, it's, it's reason to celebrate. Now remember, Moses had two fathers, right? Like he had his birth father, who was an Israelite, but he was raised in the house of Pharaoh. So he was trained in the ways of false religion and false gods. Then he goes into the wilderness for 40 years, and he comes into the home of the Midianite high priest Jethro, and he probably learns the ways of the Midianites. So who is it that is teaching Moses who God, Jehovah is? God, Jehovah himself. So we can't use excuses like, well, I wasn't raised in a Christian home, so I don't know. 
Neither was Moses. And yet he recognizes God's hand. And then I love this. Then the women join in the celebration and they're singing and dancing. And can you imagine the complete joy and abandonment they must feel knowing that they are finally free for the first time in centuries of oppression? We should be about celebrating. If the church isn't celebrating, who is? When God brings something miraculous and joyous and wonderful into your life, are you celebrating that? Not only giving him glory as Moses did, but also telling the people around you. There are some great verses in here, and and Moses is telling them, like, who is like God? No one is like our God. He talks about God's strength and loving kindness and how he, they are being led and guided into the holy place. I mean, Moses doesn't even know what all the promised land is going to hold for them yet. But he is already praising him. You know, if God has given you a promise and you haven't seen it happen yet, you, like you haven't seen the fruition of it, you should still be celebrating that God has given you this promise and believing him for it. Like they've only just been freed. They're not to the promised land yet. They're not to the place that God has promised to give them, yet they are still celebrating. So if you're waiting for victory, celebrate in the moment because if God has promised you victory, he will bring it about to pass in his timing. And we can become really um, inward focused when we stop looking for God's answers, when we stop looking for the victory that God has already given us. Because remember, we fight from victory, not for victory. And if God has promised you something, he will bring it to pass. And that is what Moses is saying. He's saying, listen, he is bringing us to the place where he will plant us in the mountain, the dwelling of the sanctuary of the Lord, which you have established. Like, they're not there yet. But Moses is saying, this is going to happen. When my dad's mom, when my maternal grandmother was 10 years old, She was not raised in a Christian home. She didn't know anything about the Lord. But she was awakened one night with a dream that she was going to have six sons, and all six sons were going to serve the Lord. So later, she came to know the Lord when her oldest, she had three children and then a nine-year break and then three children. So when her second oldest child was in high school, he started going to the Foursquare Church, and he brought his whole family to church with him, and, and they began to serve the Lord. And my grandma would... Would, she remembered that dream that she had. And she would say often to her boys, now don't forget, God promised me that all six of my children would serve the Lord. One of those six did not for a long time. And my grandma would say, don't forget, God made me a promise that all of my children would serve the Lord. And when my grandpa died, she really began to put pressure. Like, don't forget, like the God promised, and I'm getting older and I'm not seeing it happen. And I will tell you that in her lifetime, she didn't see it happen. But God always keeps his word. And a few years before my uncle passed away, he brought his family to the Lord, and they were serving the Lord and are serving the Lord today. And God keeps his promises. Let's take the time to celebrate that. So I have a couple of questions. When is the last time you celebrated a victory that God has already given you? Second question, is there a promise God has made that you're waiting to see happen? And will you celebrate from victory, believing God at his word? We look at the second thing today, and that is what we need to leave the past. The Israelites are free, but life is not perfect. Soon after this celebration, Moses begins to lead the people into the desert of Shur for a three-day journey at this point, into what's supposed to be ultimately a short journey to the promised land. But here we come to an issue that I like to call old habits die hard. Now remember that the Israelites have been enslaved and oppressed for 400 years. 
Treatments such as they have undergone have led them to really unhealthy hard attitude of bitterness and resentment. And I am not saying what they haven't gone through is not horrific. But we still ultimately choose our response and we ultimately choose our attitude in any situation. The situation the Israelites tend to go to is murmuring, complaining, and bitterness. But you know what? We all have our go-to bad attitudes or bad expressions when we're going through times of stress or we're going through difficult times. It might be outbursts of anger. Maybe it's whining and fussing. Maybe it's grumbling and complaining. Maybe it's isolation. Like your response is not is specifically what I'm talking about so much as we each have those responses that we go to because they're comfortable to us. And when God calls us to leave the past, he's also calling us to leave those expressions of I'm not getting my way, so I tend to fall into that. Now, God has shown his character right to the Israelites. He has promised them that he will lead them, that he will protect them, that he will guide them, that he will save them, that he will deliver them into the promised land. He's made all those promises, and they've seen miracle after miracle after miracle. Ten plagues, right, that did not befall them. They've seen the parting of the Red Sea. They've seen that they walked through on dry land. They have seen time and again and again and again in just so short moments that God keeps his promises, and yet they have not truly accepted that promise. Look at verse 24. It says, then the people complained and turned against Moses. What are we going to drink? They demanded. Now, I want you to imagine that as slaves, they were probably unable to make demands, and their basic needs were probably provided for. They have not learned yet to trust their leaders to be good to them, so they are unwilling to trust God and to trust Moses to be good to them. In the New Testament, Jesus is telling a story, and he says, even earthly fathers are good to their children, and if, someone, if one of them asks for bread, that he's not going to give them a serpent. How much greater does your heavenly father treat you? Like, if there's, if there's anyone we can trust, it's God. But we time and again find ourselves at this place where we stick in the past, where we go to a comfort place that's unhealthy. And we're going to see over and over in the next few weeks and months as we go through the book of Genesis that every time something difficult comes to cross their path, instead of leaning into trust, they choose bitterness and grumbling and complaining. Because that was their go-to safe place. That was their coping skill. Not a healthy coping skill, but a coping skill. And see, we all have those. We all have those things that we tend to lean into when we don't like what's happening around us. You know what you lean into. I know what I lean into. It's not necessarily the same thing, but the hard attitude of are we going to trust God or trust myself to protect myself becomes the issue here. Because you see, God is good even when we are not. He is good to the Israelites. He desires covenant relationship with them. He is patient with them, and he will be with us as well. I want you to look at God's response to the people's complaining. Now remember, complaining is a throwback to their past. It's, it's, it's their, their mind and mentality of of not freedom, of not sons. It's their mind and mentality of orphans and slaves. It's a slave mentality that says, I will not trust God to do something good in my life. So if you find yourself at that spot, I can't trust God even. I got only trust in me. That's a slave mentality. We want to live in freedom. Freedom requires trust. And we're going to see that. So here's what happened. Moses, the people complain, right? Oh, the water's bitter. We can't drink it. And I'm not saying it wasn't. It, I'm sure it was. And I'm picky about water. Like, I like good water. Here's what Moses says. He cries out to the Lord. The Lord shows him a piece of wood. Moses throws it into the water, and it made the water good to drink. Even though the people aren't trusting in God, Moses is. 
And Moses is using really good leadership skills here. He is modeling before them, this is how we trust God. This is how we rely on God to provide for us. God asks the Israelites, like, can you just trust me? Nope, they're going to go to the grumbling and complaining. I said I like good water, remember? Um, oh, actually, I'm going to get to that in a little bit, in just a minute, because we're going to talk about good water. So God gives the Israelites this challenge, but with a promise. And typically, if God asks something difficult of you, there will be a blessing attached to it. He doesn't ask us to go through difficult things because he is egocentric, because he's on a power trip, because he wants to just challenge us. Remember, God is a loving father. So if he asks something difficult, it's going to come with a blessing. And here we see in verse 26, he said, if you will listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God, and you will do what is right in his sight, obeying his commands and keeping all his decrees, then I will not make you suffer any of the diseases I sent on the Egyptians, for I am Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals you. This is a huge blessing, the Lord who heals you. And we are going to see this in the book of Exodus happen. There is kind of a requirement, though. You have to be obeying the voice of the Lord, not in perfection, but in trust. Is there an area of your life that you need to give to God and trust him for? Are you willing to lean into the difficult task of trusting God? Or are you going to choose, like the Israelites, to stew in your old ways of handling things? And will you listen to the voice of the Lord and follow his commands? Because here we have a beautiful point to the passage. It's really short verses. Remember that God has promised all along to free his people of Israel from the bondage of Egypt, and to restore them to the promised land. So he didn't just promise to free them. It comes with so much more than that. Like, I'm going to free you from this bondage, and I'm making a covenant with you, an eternal covenant, that you will be my people, and I will be your God, and I'm going to bring you into the promised land. Now, this promised land There are crops in abundance. There are already houses and cities that the Israelites won't even have to build. It's ready for them. And they can go there and they can flourish and they can prosper. Now we're going to see along the way that there's a lot of disobedience that leads to problems. But at this point, God is saying, if you will do these things, I will do these things. On the way to the end goal, God still has blessings for us. Like, Our end goal is making it to heaven and being in face-to-face, forever relationship with God. But along the way, God still has blessings for us. Verse 27 says this, after leaving Mara, so this is immediately after they've gone to their old habits of complaining and bitterness. After leaving Mara, the Israelites traveled on to the oasis of Elam where they found 12 springs and 70 palm trees. They camped there beside the water. Now, this is pretty ironic since they've just been complaining about the quality of water that God led them to. So God leaves them to a place of natural spring water. Now, remember I said I like good water. Have you ever lived in a place with undrinkable water? Like I've traveled overseas a lot. You have to do, do bottled water for safety's sake. That's just part of traveling overseas. When, they, when people from overseas travel here, they should also drink bottled water because there's different, there's different bacteria, there's different viruses, there's different enzymes, all those things that our bodies aren't used to. But you know, there's places in the United States where the water is undrinkable. For three years, we lived in a town in North Dakota where the water was undrinkable. We had a filter pitcher that we used for cooking, and we bought bottled water for drinking. It's so bad in the town that many of the public drinking fountains have warning signs on them. So after we moved to Minnesota, which has great water, and Wisconsin, which has great water, I honestly forgot about how bad the water was in North Dakota. And then we took some students out for an event to visit the Bible college, and I went to the fountain and I took a big swig. Now, on top of it, it wasn't cold. So it's not only bad water, but it's warm. And I'm sitting there with this mouthful of water trying to figure out where I can spit it because it is so bad. And I remembered in that moment, why did you take a drink out of the fountain? You know not to drink the water here. So I went in the bathroom and spit it out in the sink. But sometimes I think we find ourselves in those places where it's a good place, 
and we're doing well, and we forget how bad something was before, and then we kind of find ourselves going back to that place. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I'd forgotten how bad the water was, and then I took a big drink of it. And I think that sometimes when life is going really well, we tend to forget the things that God has already delivered us from, and then we fall into that old habit an old way of doing things, and then we find ourselves there and we're stuck. And we either, reforce, we either refuse to move into the goodness of God or we get fixated on the past and we get stuck there. And, and sometimes it's not always past failures, but also past successes. And I think that we can, we can have a tendency to just camp out where God never meant us to camp out. And boy, are we going to see that in Exodus. The Israelites are constantly going to camp out where God never intended for them to be. And God says, look, I am leading you to the promised land, and if you will trust and follow me, I have these places of rest for you. Twelve springs and 70 um, oases, the, the, the palm trees and all these things. Like, man, my happy place is palms, trees, and an ocean breeze. I love that. Can, why would I sit in a place of bondage instead of stepping into that place of rest? But you know what? We do that. We find ourselves camping out where God never intended us to camp and refusing to move in to the things he has for us because it causes us to move forward and to move past some things. So you need, we need to get healing from God so we can leave the past in the past, and leave the bitterness and regret there, and move forward into the rest that God has for us. Because over and over in Scripture, God promises to be a safe place for us to rest and to recover from battles, from grief, from bondage, from sin, from hardships, from broken relationships, all those things. He is Jehovah Rapha, and he can heal. But we need to enter into his rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight to 30 says this, I like it in the New Living. It says, Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. And Psalm 116.7 says, Let my soul be at rest, for the Lord has been good to me. Now see, Jesus doesn't say we don't have to carry burdens. He doesn't say we don't have to work hard. A yoke of oxen, they work together and they work hard and they carry the load together. He's not saying, I will take your yoke. He's saying, you take my yoke. In other words, work for the things that I have called you to work for and stop digging your heels into the past. Stop camping out where I never called you to go in the first place. I have healing for your soul so that you may be at rest. I hear from many people, and I say it too, I'm just so tired. Are you tired today? Ask the Lord for rest. Do you need peace and solace? Come to the Lord for rest. Have you taken up your own burden that the Lord is asking you to lay down and to trust him with something new? Shake off that burden and take his yoke upon you. Are there areas of your life where you need to reevaluate the amount of work and effort you're putting in and let Jesus carry that load with you? Because I think sometimes we put so much work and effort into things that God is not calling us to put work and effort into. And then we wonder where in the world he is. And he's standing here saying, come to me, let me bring healing to your soul. Let me give you rest. And then you can move forward into the promised land. It's really easy in the hustle and bustle of our lives to just go, go, go. But it is really hard to stop and to listen and to rest. And today we looked at how the Israelites, they took time to celebrate. And when we celebrate, man, our joy tank is full. Like we're ready to go. We're ready to tackle on so many things. And without that celebration, life can be drudgerous. 
You can fill your life with meaningless and unimportant tasks. You can let the urgent take care of the priority. And the priority should be finding rest and solace with God. The priority should be making our way to the promised land. Secondly, I show that we have a tendency to stick to habits and attitudes and perspectives of the past. It's, we may not even like it, but it's comfortable to us. It's our go-to response. We know where that will take us. We, we, we trust in our own emotions. And our emotions can lie to us every day. So is there an area of your life that like, you need to let go of? To step out from the past. To be, you know what? That was yesterday. I'm going forward today. And finally, God wants to lead us to a place of rest and security and safety, and peace, and provision. But it's up to us to trust him to take us there and to trust him with the journey. And I think that as we walk forward in obedience towards the promise, we will see the blessings of God multiplied upon multiply upon multiply. That's what I hope you take with you today, that We celebrate those things, the goodness of God, that we celebrate the things that he brings into our life, that we let go of the past, our sin, our regret, our mistakes, our hurts, our pain, our anger, our bitterness, our grief, our bondage, and that we walk forward in deliverance saying, I will obey you. I will trust you to bring healing to my heart and my soul and my emotions and my relationships and all those things. And I will find rest so that I may step into the promised land. Would you pray with me today? Lord, there were some really exciting things in this passage, but oh, there were some things that just strike the heart. That if we're honest, we struggle with. Letting the past go. And moving forward, even though we know you're with us, our human nature said, hold on to that which you already know, even if it's not good. Because the future is unknown. But God, when we trust you, we can trust you with the unknown. So Lord, I pray that today you will help us to make that decision to to let go of the past, to celebrate your goodness, and to walk with you on mission into that promised land, that we will go forward as a community of believers, that we will support and surround and love one another as we cause people to grow in relationship with you. God, we ask your blessing upon this this community of faith. We ask your blessing upon our movement. We ask your blessing upon our leaders, leaders here at the journey and leaders of our whole movement, Lord. We ask that you will give us wisdom and discernment as we lead that you'll continue to speak to us in powerful and prophetic ways. And that, Lord, our hearts will be restored and open and listening. And that we will have the, the heart of obedience towards you in the things you are calling us into. We give you this day, Lord. We give you our lives. And we thank you and we praise you for the goodness that you have bestowed upon us. And the sacrifice of your son, which made it all possible. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, Journey. Thank you for being out with us. We're gonna take communion this morning, so if you have uh, something at home, a cracker, some juice, um, if you wanna grab that, we're gonna take that together. And um, the cracker represents the body of Christ, so as you take that, be thankful for the things he has done. The juice represents the blood that was shed for us, and be thankful for that. And take a moment to pray as a family and enjoy communion together. Have a great week, Journey. We'll see you next week.